So we're going to be putting the end piece together. Now what I've done is I've taken this plywood piece and I've drilled a pilot hole where I've marked and I've also gone ahead taken the screws and put them all the way through just so that I can establish the threads. What you want to do first is actually take your screws and push them through just so that they start protruding. So you just want to do that with all three screws. Alright, once you've done that, you'll notice that I've got the end piece down here and I've actually got the strut upside down on top of it. So what we're going to be doing is taking this and sliding it into the strut. So if you can see, I've already got three pilot holes, which I've used the holes on this piece to establish the pilot holes. So what you want to do is you want to line up these holes with the strut here. You take your piece like this, slide it in to where the pilot holes in this end piece line up with these screws and then you start screwing this in. One thing you want to do, or what I like to do, is once you've got them attached, you loosen these screws up a little bit so that you can sort of slide this around. And I like this to be flush here. It's just personal preference. Another thing you can do for this is say if you want to make slightly longer strings, you can pull this out to accommodate longer strings. Or if you want to mainly work on shorter strings, you can bring this in so that you don't have to be doing so much adjustment on the other side. So while I say it's permanent, it's still pretty much adjustable for the most part. Well, once you've got it where you want it to be, just want to tighten these screws. There it is. As a final, final bit, you want to take one of these arms and place it in. So, here's the finished end piece. Alright, here's the finished string jig. So the way it works is basically when you're making your string, you tie your loop, or the start of your loop here. You loop it around from that post all the way to this post and back. However many strands you want, or how many times you want it to loop over. Then you go ahead and you secure the loop to this side. And once you've done that, you loosen up the wing nut here, turn it around, 
tightening the loop, and since these arms are equidistant to each other, the distance from here for the string from here to the end is equal from this post to this post to the end and back. So it keeps everything really tight so that you can go ahead and serve along this area. And these lines are just to help you so that, let's say you want four inches of serving. You go from here to here and that's four inches of serving. That way you can keep things centered. And once you're done with that, you loosen this up, turn it back around, and you actually want to move this and pushing it across the same way you do if you had nails on a board. And push it down so that your served end is now on this portion, it's centered on this, it's centered on this screw here. And then you go ahead, loosen this, bring it out, tighten it, serve this end. Once it's served, you bring this back around, lock it again, and then you can serve the end of your loop here you can serve the end of the loop here. And once that's done, you just tighten this up, pull it in, take your string off, and it's ready to go. So there it is. It's really simple to do. This whole jig, buying everything from Home Depot, cost me about $20. But when I do these, I usually make two because these come in 10 foot lengths so you can get two five foot pieces which will make you two jigs so all in all it's not bad i really like it it's a lot simpler to use than a lot of things so here it is thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye